As a top producing relationship-based real estate agent, your very best referrals will come from a financial advisor. In this video, I share with you why, the three reasons why they're not referring you, and three very simple things that you can do to begin to get those referrals on a regular basis. All right, let's dive right in. First, why are referrals from financial advisors so much better than anything else out there? Well, let's begin with this reality, is that when people come referred from a financial advisor, they are more likely to wait for you, pay for you, and afterwards be yeah. super glad that they did. Now, when I say wait for you, what do I mean by that? You see, let's take the example of when somebody finds you online. They've never met you before, but simply online recommended them to you. If you do not pick up the phone, if you do not drop dinner with your loved one, your anniversary dinner to answer the phone, they will scroll and find the next agent. They don't care about you. They're looking for a house, not an agent. And they will quickly replace you with somebody else who meets the criteria, which is open this door now. Secondly, they're willing to pay for you. The reality is they're coming from a financial advisor. Those two things are important. Number one, financial. They've got finances to manage. Number two, they have a professional managing them for them. It's a very easy transition to recognize that I also need an advisor to help me to manage my wealth in real estate. And the third, which is they'll be grateful afterwards that they did wait for you, that they did pay for you. You see, when consumers come from other advisors, they appreciate advisors. They're grateful for you. They're not coming in suspect. They're not coming in wishing that you were not there. They're coming in looking for expert guidance, which opens the door for you to have a long-term relationship with this client, all because a financial advisor opened the door. So let's go ahead and now talk about the three reasons why financial advisors are not <laughs> referring you. Nope. When I was authoring my book, The Upstream Model, which by the way is a blueprint for helping you to work by professional referral, I interviewed dozens of financial advisors and I asked the question, how many opportunities do you have to refer a real estate agent? And the answer was pretty synonymous, which is about 18 times a year. Now keep in mind, this is without them trying. This is their clients just opening up saying, yeah, I think we're gonna get rid of that property. I think we're gonna buy another property, et cetera. 18 times, that's more than three clients every two months that they could have referred, but they're not. So why are they not? My follow-up question to each and every one of these financial advisors is how many of those 18 referrals are you currently passing to a real estate agent? The answer was mind blowing. The answer was about zero. Zero? There's 18 opportunities you refer none of them. Why not? Well, this is a perfect segue into the three reasons why financial advisors are not referring you. Number one, they do not see you as an equal. The most simple way to summarize this was when somebody explained to me that real estate agents have past clients. Financial advisors don't. They don't have past clients, they just have clients. They see themselves very differently as you. They see you as a real estate agent as serving somebody from between two to four months and then putting them on a drip campaign and hoping that they circle back in 10 years to use you again, maybe refer you a couple of times along the way. Whereas a financial advisor has an annual meeting with you. They even have, at times, a quarterly review with you. They're ongoing, managing your wealth all the time, helping you to reach your goals by being the center of all things financial for you. In fact, I would go so far as to say, not only do they not see you as an equal, they actually see you as a competitor. You see, many real estate agents are so myopically focused on real estate that they try and encourage their clients to take all of their money out of the financial markets and put it into real estate. I'm telling you, if you wanna do business with financial advisors, that is not a good strategy. Similarly, it's good to not have a financial advisor that wants to take all the money out of real estate and put it in the markets. There needs to be a nice balanced portfolio in order for this relationship to work. But this is, again, part of the reason why these relationships haven't worked in the past. They see you as a competitor, they see you as a threat, and they don't really see you as an equal. So how do we fix that? The very simple thing that you can do to fix that is to have a conversation with a financial advisor after being introduced. Best way to do that is to go, is to, go to one of your favorite clients to say, do you have a great financial advisor who you would rate as a nine or a 10. I would love to have one to whom I can refer my clients to. If you already have a great one, you might not need to do this, but this is a great way to get an introduction to a great financial advisor. Now, because you're coming in referred and introduced from one of your ideal clients, you have the ability to introduce yourself in a unique way. Now, this is not the unique way. Here's a stack of my cards. Please pass this out to all of your clients. That is the typical real estate agent coming in with your handout looking for transactions. Instead, you should have a conversation to say, you know, oftentimes my industry doesn't do a good job of really working together with financial advisors, working together with them to help the client stay on track for reaching their ultimate financial goals. You see, I see a financial advisor as being at the center of all things financial. I see myself as being an important part of that team, but really deferring to the financial advisor as to what the overall household's family goals are. When you come in with that stance, now they're listening. 
Here's the next thing you can say is that many in my industry do not see their clients as an ongoing lifelong relationship. Now they might see it as a friendly relationship. They don't see it as an ongoing business relationship. I work very differently. I don't have past clients. I just have clients. Note that I took that from them, right? So I don't have past clients. In other words, I continue to have consultations with my clients repeatedly. Every year I have an annual review with each of my clients. In so doing, it allows me to continue to look for needs, look for opportunities to refer my clients to professionals that they need to have in their world. Part of the reason why I want to have a conversation with you is because I'm looking for a financial advisor to whom I can introduce to my clients and I'd love to learn more about you. Now, all of a sudden, instead of you trying to gain and earn their respect, you've turned the table. You're now asking for them to show you why you should respect them, right? Now, this should not be done with any sort of ego. It should be said in complete humility and gratitude for the opportunity to be there. So be careful that this doesn't backfire on you, but just know that I would love to introduce a great financial advisor to my clients, and I'm looking for those that I can do this with. Another thing that you can do to earn their value is by talking about your client's wealth as their real estate assets under management. Now, I have the good fortune of running a company called Pro Insight, which is a prop tech company that helps real estate agents to gather that information and know what their total real estate assets under management are. Now, if you're not a member of Pro Insight and you don't have that information easily at your fingertips, there's an easy way to do this. Just quickly estimate. Take the total number of households in your client database, multiply that by the average value of homes in this database, right? That will give you some sort of estimation. It might be $250 million in, in real estate assets under management. It might be $500 million in real estate assets under management. The point is this, you're talking to that financial advisor as an equal. You're recognizing and sharing with them the way in which you see your clients. It's not a number of closed transactions. You see the problem with that? The transaction closed, closings. That's not what you want to convey to them. You wanna to convey to them that that door is still open, that you know how much wealth they have. You're very aware of that and you're tuned into key life events that allow you to continue to be valuable to them and to other professional partners that you bring to the table to serve the client at that particular time. All right, now reason number two why financial advisors are not referring you as a real estate agent. Quite frankly, they don't think that you can help them. Again, they don't think that you have a good enough relationship with these clients to be able to truly help them. Here's a very quick, simple tactic that you can do to help them to see that you can. You see, the conversation that you'll have with a financial advisor is this. Have you ever experienced clients buying or selling property and not telling you about it? You kind of get blindsided by them either asking for a wire transfer or finding out after the fact they sold a property and had bunch of money sitting in a savings account that you could have invested for them. The answer will most likely be, yeah, I hate that. By the way, that happens in one of the real pain points is that there's so much money that moves around in real estate and these clients don't think to talk to their financial advisor about their real estate holdings. So here's the simple tactic that will reverse their feelings about you not being able to help them. You see, one of the main points that's the most painful thing for financial advisors is when they're the last ones to learn that somebody has bought or sold real estate. You see, they often get, times get blindsided by somebody saying, hey, I want to transfer $500,000 out of our investments in order to buy a second home, in order to buy an investment property. Or they didn't inform their financial advisor the fact that they sold a property and have had half a million dollars sitting in a savings account somewhere that could have been invested by that particular advisor. So that's the pain point. So how can you help them? Well, when you're talking to the financial advisor, you let them know that if this truly is a pain point, you would be willing that prior to each and every one of their annual client reviews to send you the addresses of the properties owned by that particular client. You will create a current market analysis, taking into consideration projections, trends, what's happening in the local community, and sign your name to the bottom. That allows this financial advisor, when he sits down, to be able to create a bit of a family office-like experience for his clients. What I mean by that is the wealthiest of the wealthy have a team of professionals that collaborate together to help that particular family maintain and grow their wealth. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how do I, like, do I show up for that meeting? The answer is no, which is great because your artifact, right? Your paperwork and signature is in that meeting, but you don't have to be. But that financial advisor is essentially talking about you in that meeting when you're not there. Isn't that lovely? The client says, oh, it's interesting you bring up this property. We're thinking about selling it. You've already done a current market analysis. It's so easy for the financial advisor at that very moment to say, you know, do you already have a real estate agent who you would say is a nine or a 10 that would help you with that? If not, please contact my friend, Justin, because he's already done some work on this and he'd be a great person for you to talk to, right? I, I would rate him as a nine or a 10. My personal experience, make up your own decision. 
but he's been a great resource for me, as you can tell. Now, all of a sudden, that financial advisor has been wickedly valuable to you, but also you've been very valuable to him because now, not just in that moment when the client's thinking about real estate, but ongoing, those clients are going to think when we go to buy or sell real estate, we should talk to our financial advisor because in our meeting with the financial advisor, he brought up our real estate. Therefore, he wants to know about this stuff. He wants to advise us and counsel us on these things. Yes, you can help a financial advisor. This is the easiest path to begin helping them to see that as well. Now, the third reason why a financial advisor is not referring you is that they actually see you as a liability. You see, a financial advisor does not like making referrals because it feels like an endorsement. So the best way to coach them is to say, please don't refer me, right? I don't need you to endorse me. I just want to be introduced, right? That's much more comfortable for a financial advisor to make an introduction versus a referral. So that helps to eliminate any potential uh, risk of you not doing a good job and it reflecting poorly or creating a, a real uh, liability for this particular advisor. To even take this a step further where you're not just not a liability, but you're actually an asset, is to say, I'd love to spend a few minutes with you, hear about your client experience so that I know when I'm introducing somebody to you, I know what that client experience looks like. I'd also love to take just a few minutes, five to 10 minutes to walk you through what my client experience looks like. So you feel comfortable what how I treat clients. But more importantly, as I'm going through this client experience, I want you to tell me at what point I could weave you into the conversation. In other words, at what point in the client life cycle are you really interested in being introduced? Now all of a sudden you've taken what might have been a liability and having you stepped up to the table and be referred, you're now saying, no, no, you don't need to refer me, just make an introduction. And by the way, I want you to tell me where I can make introductions in my client experience. Now all of a sudden you're an asset. Those three simple tactics help negate and neutralize the three concerns as to why they're not referring you so that you truly can get the very best referrals, the very best introductions available to a real estate agent. Now, if this has been valuable, please let me know. And also remember that at Pro Insight, the company that I lead, we've created a digital platform that makes it really easy for you to get and receive referrals from other professionals. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you soon.